One is, uh, is to show some of the things that are crop circles and photos and stuff. Now, I'm very suspicious of all this. They can doctor up photos and they can do anything at all, of course, today, can't they? But we're talking about, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. So, UFOs, please explain. How can they change shape? Vanish? Appear mysteriously? Where are they hiding when we can't see them? They've been tracked on radar at 25,000 miles an hour. There's no sonic boom, no burn up. They can do a right angle turn at 15,000 uh, mile per hour with no physical, uh, no physical problems, that there's no physical object could endure doing that. And often they don't even show up on photos. Next one. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the world's rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So Chuck Missler, who's a very, very well-known um, political, uh, um, prophetic uh, commentator, he believes that, the, that these particular aliens really uh, are something to do with demonic. We'll move on now to the actual Noah's Ark and we'll find out that uh, the Ark itself was 450 foot long. That's a very, very big boat. When you think of it, the technology to actually make that boat, and did you know that they never made a boat that big until about the 1930s? A huge, this is a huge thing. It was 200 and, it was 20,000 tonnes, the Titanic, it's about the same weight as the Titanic. You'd actually fit 522 rail cars, uh, 125,000 sheep would fit into the ark, 18,000 species, and uh, seven clean. So in actual fact, the ark would hold thousands and thousands of sheep. It was the same size as that boat there, which is, which is the Titanic, the Lex X1. Thank you. That's, that's how big the ark actually was. Next one, thank you. Good. And so it's the ideal size to just sit in the water and ride with the waves. It couldn't be. It was perfect dimensions for the job that God designed it to do. And that's exactly what it did. And if that was true, with great waves rushing round the earth and so on, uh, as that guy seemed to suggest, well, the ark would have been able to ride those things. Some perspectives for us today. <clears throat> there was only one ark. And that reminds us of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. There's only one Saviour. There's only one way, and that is that we can come in fellowship with God, and that's through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And it's interesting, in that ark, there was only one door. And Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if anyone enter in, he shall be saved. And I trust everybody today has actually made that trip and has committed their lives to Christ because Jesus died on the cross to take away our sin. He rose again to give us everlasting life and he said, come unto me and I will receive you. And no matter who we are today, no matter where we've been or what we've done, we can, we can come to God and God will forgive us all because of what Jesus has done. The door is open for you today. The, the gangplank is down for you today. And so God says, come, come. As many as call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There were no births or deaths, and all in the ark were saved. You know, the sad part was that for 120 years, Noah preached and warned people. And those of you that have studied the background and prior to the flood would understand there was never been any rain prior to the flood because of the way God designed our beautiful, beautiful uh, world. And when I drive over, when I fly over from, uh, from Adelaide to Perth and I just fly over miles and miles and miles of nothing, I said, God, now you never created this world like that. It would have all been rainforest. I just come back from Cairns last week and man, most you walk off the plane in Cairns and, and everything is so green and so beautiful and you're driving up and down from, uh, from Cairns to Atherton through the rainforest and oh Lord, this is how you must have created the world. It's so, so beautiful. So something really happened.
to get rid of that beauty. It's not bad now, but I tell you what, it would have been very, very, very wonderful then. But, uh, but once that all, all in the ark was saved, all speculation, argument finished, when God closed the door. And Noah said, please come, please come, please come. And they laughed at him. And they said he was a nutter. They probably called him Nutter Noah. And only Noah and his family were saved. Sobering, isn't it, when you think of it? But you know, there are things coming up ahead for us. The Bible's speaking of things coming up for us too. And people can be negative and critical. One of the things about the, this particular period of time that really touched my heart, and that was the story of the mammoths. Now, up in Siberia, northern Russia, there are whole islands that are made and composed of fossil bones. Chinese people, for centuries, have been going up into that region and getting ivory, the tusks of these great mammoths. And, and as you look and see what's happened to them, they were drowned, they were buried standing up, they were snap frozen, the food is actually still in the mouth of these great, great, uh, great animals. They were buried in the frozen tundra of northern Siberia. And when the rivers run through the tundra and cut a track, and these great beasts, they fall into the rivers, <coughs> the wolves actually eat the flesh. And so they're perfectly preserved. And there must be millions of them up there and God has left them there as, as a proof. And so that uh, at one stage, this world was different. There was the Beckendorf ma mammoth. They discovered this particular thing and they, they pulled it out and had a look at it in its tummy and, and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> and that's another picture. Next one again. Of these huge, huge elephants. Uh, just buried, snap frozen, drowned and... Uh, the Bible writers accepted the flood. Jesus accepted the flood and made it a sign of his second coming. <clears throat> As in the days of Noah, hybrid Nephilim and advanced technology was before the flood. Aliens and advanced technology today. Are the fallen angels active today? I don't know. Are they from another dimension and really demonic beings not from another dimension? planet. What lessons can we get from the flood? Sin certainly calls down judgment. But there is salvation